Today we're going to be talking about is probability and statistics. So within engineering, we actually have to deal with probability and statistics. So what is probability? Probability is looking at a large sample of something and then guessing what's in your hand, while statistics says what's in your hand, what's inside the bucket. Now, what's going to happen is in college, you will most likely have to want... Uh, you will have to take a class like some applied statistics and engineering class like this and you're going to based on the likelihood of events that occur so how can we get determined probability well there's first there's the experimental based on observations um, like quality control but then there's the theoretical which means how often something occurs based on statistical um, looking at it so like for instance how dice rolls or coin flips now i want to emphasize this quality control and quality assurance quality control is the process is process oriented meaning it's it is focusing on preventing quality issues in the process so while you're controlling the quality throughout the process so you're looking at like hey let's look at this dimension of this oh let's look at the dimension of it and continue down the line before the final product this is front end heavy Quality assurance is looking at the end product. So you're looking at the end product and you're measuring and looking at all the statistics at the end of the product, making sure everything meets the manufacturer's, uh, you know, the the uh, consumer's specifications. So this is back end. Um, when we use quality control, you actually think of it as actually what quality assurance is. Quality control happens during the process of quality assurance is assuring the customer that the product they got is actually to the specifications. So let's go through some vocab words. Experiment. This is the act of getting a result, i.e. like rolling the dice or flipping the coin. An event is one of the possible outcomes of that, like a five on a dice. The outcome is what is the actual outcome? What is it? So it's actually the five on a piece of di on a dice. The sample size is the number of possible outcomes. Let's say a six possible outcomes, and the sample space are the all the actual outcomes themselves in numerical uh, forms, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, probability is a way to say something like will have the, the guess of how much it's going to happen. This is usually expressed in a fraction, decimal, or percentage, like one half, or 0.5, or 50 percent. And the equation is this, the probability is the number of events that could happen divided by all the possible combinations of happening. So what is the probability of a 5 coming up on a single dice? Well, there's one chance that the 5 will show up on a dice. But there are six possible combinations that could happen. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or 6. So it becomes 1 over 6, or 0.167, or 16.7%. But what happens if you add a second dice into it? Well, we can actually look at it and we can say, what is the probability of two fives coming up on a set of dice rolled? So, well, the first die rolled is a one-sixth chance of rolling it, and the second chance is another one-sixth chance of rolling. So there's only one possible combination that it can occur, and that is one. But if you notice, if I roll a one, I could roll my second dice could be any one of six. My two could be any six, uh, can be any number of uh, one through six. And we can do that for all of this. This is called a probability tree. And it's every possible combination there is. And there are 36 total combinations. So we get one thirty-sixth or 2.56% chance of that occurring. So this is kind of one of those uh, a probability tree of will it roll uh, two on the second dice so um, if can you roll a roll a two and then roll a three on the second roll and you can see you have one six chance here one six chance but you have a five six chance of not rolling it and a five six chance of rolling it on not on the first one and a five six chance of not rolling it on the second one now the more trials you have, the more accurate your results are. So the more you do it, the better your experiment will get matching your theoretical. So if you see a 5 appears 140 times out of 1,000 is a much better than saying, uh, I rolled it one dice and it came up as a 5, so that's good. And that's, that's not a good way. You want to have more numbers, thousands of statistical data points. 
Now, in ma in mathematics, the word and and or actually have a mathematical function. Uh, and is multiplicative, meaning that you multiply the two probabilities. So what's the probability of A and B happening? Well, then you take the probability of A, multiply it with the probability of B. So if we get, for an example, what's the probability of rolling a 6 and a 5 on a second dice? Well, if you roll, that's going to be one six on your first dice, and the second is, a, is another six. So we can take those two one six and multiply them. One six plus times one six, that gives you one thirty sec one thirty six or two point seven seven percent. But the probability of ors is going to be additive. So the or is going to be additive. So if um, two independent things occur and they have an or, then you can say the probability of A occurring or B occurring. So for instance, what is the probability of a 6 or a 5 happening on a dice roll? Well, then you can take them and add them. So 1 6 plus 1 6, which is 2 6 or 33% chance. Now, histograms is a way uh, we look at bar graphs that show the number of data items that occur within each interval. So the table below shows the number of hours students watch TV in one week. And, uh, and all that data is collected. So we can look here at this data. Um, then from that data, we can see how uh, what is the frequency table and we can see what is the number students actually watch so we can see that the number of hours of TV watched 1 through 3 is 15 people 4 through 6 is 15 17 people and 7 through 9 is 16 people then we choose an appropriate scale and intervals for the vertical axis so we see that the number of frequencies here is ranging from no higher than 20 so I'm going to make, make it up here and then the bottom axis is going to be what is our our what we call our bins which is we have our group of one through three four through six and seven through nine and we then plot our data as a bar chart the bars are usually found that they do touch um, and they give the graph title hours of television watch so we can look here that most teenagers watch about four to six hours of television watched so uh, now what we're going to do is how to use a computer to do it for you. So if you have Excel, you can actually follow along in this. And so what we can do is we have to create a histogram in Excel. So if you do this at home, you can, or you can watch this, um, and we'll have to do this on our computers in the classroom. Uh, most likely they will not have it set up for you. So in order to do that, you need to first go to File, and you're going to click down to Add-ins, and then you're going to see this one, Analysis Tool Pick. You're going to click on that. After you're going to do that, you're going to press Go. Then you're going to have a little thing that says, uh, do you... Uh, Go to the go to Excel's and it'll look for it, and then you're going to click on the combo box that says a little check mark, and it'll says analysis toolbox, and then you'll uh, press the add, and then you press the go again. Do not press this until you press the go, and then you press OK. Afterwards, you'll get a new little tab located right here. It says data analysis. Now, if you don't know how to get there and you haven't gotten this, please raise your hand um, when you're in class so that you can try to get that. Um, so now with this, you can actually use that to make a histogram in Excel. The first column is input data and the second column is my bins. Okay, so I grabbed here is a bunch of ACT scores. Uh, I collected over a group of 34 random students. Um, and then here's my ranges I'm going to look at. What I can do then is go to my data analysis, click it, it brings up this, then I press histogram and OK. Now I select which data point I want, so I'm going to select that data point that had all those ACT scores. That was my first column. Then my bin range, that was my bins, that's what's going to be on my x-axis, and then I press OK. That's going to then give me a chart that I can then graph, and then I can graph it, and I can look here, and I can see that most students range in the 21 to 25, and this is our Excel, meaning that most of the frequently 
people get these scores, few people here, few people here, less and less so. So if you have any questions on Expel, especially if you're in class, uh, please raise your hand and I will help you out.